hello and welcome this is the second part of the videos on vectors uh, in this video we'll try to cover the rest of the topics on vectors if you missed the first part of the video uh, i would suggest you to go to the description box and you will find the link of the first part the representation of vectors in component form Let's say we have uh, two points in XY coordinate system in a plane. The point P has coordinates X1, Y1 and point Q, X2, Y2. And the vector V is represented by the, po uh, by the point P, Q like this. So we have to represent this vector V in component form. So as you can see from this graph, the point P is here. So, uh, the distance right here, this is x1 and the distance, this is y1. That's how we denote the point P, x1, y1 in two dimensional space. And similarly, we, this total distance is x2, as you can see, and the distance here is y2. Now, we are interested in this distance, this portion. So, the total distance is x2, and if we subtract x1 from this x2 we get x2 minus x1 i mean this distance therefore since this is a rectangle a perfect rectangle therefore this side is also x2 minus x1 similarly if i say this is point r then the distance from q to r it should be y2 minus y1. The vector v in this case it can be represents as the component form x2 minus x1 comma y2 minus y1. Note here this notation is not the parenthesis it's just angular parenthesis or angular bracket. So this is how we represent a vector in two dimensional space if they have in, in component form. So this is vector v from point P to Q. For example, let's say I have two points 3 comma 8 and another point is negative 1 comma 3 and I have a vector v. Now let's say this point is A and this is point B and I have a vector from point A to b vector v can be written as v equals to x2 that is negative 1 minus x1 which is 3 comma y2 that is 3 minus y1 that is 8 so the vector v it can be written as so finally the vector v is negative 4 negative 5 another example i have a point let's say c it's called 12 comma negative 10 and i have the other point d negative 20 to 10. i have to find a vector w w that is from c to d point c to d this equals to x2 minus x1 this is my x2 y2 x1 y1 so x2 minus x1 so minus 20 minus 12 comma 10 minus minus 10 finally vector w can be written as w equals to negative 32 comma 20 another example let's say we have the other vector v which is negative 32 comma 20 that is the vector v has two components negative first component negative 32 the second component is 20 with the initial point 5 comma 3 and we have to find the terminal point note that in this case we have to find the terminal point so something inside the parenthesis not the vector notation so terminal point the first component of the initial point plus the first component of the given vector v comma the second component of the initial point plus the second component of the given vector and we have 27 comma 23 operations on vectors the next topic is operations on vectors we did the equality but uh, we did not do the equality in component form here we're going to do the equality 
with of the vectors which are given in component form. Two vectors are equal. Let's say we have vector v and we have vector w, and these two vectors has a uh, vector notation form. Let's say vector v is given in this notation a1 comma b1 and vector w this is also given in vector notation a2 comma b2 now these two vectors v and w they are equal if and only if their components are also equal that is a1 equals to a2 and b1 equals to b2 number two addition of vectors in component forms again if v equals to a1 comma b1 and w equals to a2 comma b2 then if i want to add v and w then i have to write the components are added so this is how we we add two vectors if we want to do subtraction then v vector v minus vector w equals to this will be also a vector and that vector has the form a1 minus a2 comma b1 minus b2 if a vector v has components same components like here and w has the same components like here and number four scalar multiplication let's say c is any scalar then if you multiply this c with a vector v the vector v has component form and we we'll write a1 comma b1 and then finally we take this c both with the components so c a1 comma c b1 next topic more properties of vectors if we have three vectors let's say u v and w and we have two scalars c and d then the first one if i add v and w and the result that i will get it will be the same if i add w plus v i mean if i change the order of addition it will not affect the result this law it called the commutative property commutative law of vectors second property if i add v and w first and then if i add another vector u with the resultant of this uh, two vectors then the result will be the same if i add v with the resultant of w and u this law is called the associative law third property existence of additive identity if i add a vector with zero vector the vector does not change i get vector v again or i can also write this equals to vector zero vector plus the vector v this is called the existence of additive identity number four if i multiply a constant c with the addition of two vectors v and w the result will be like this cv plus c w this is called the distributive property but in this case we are distributing a scalar quantity among the vectors so in this case in parentheses i would write vectors fifth property for any vector v there exists the opposite vector negative v such that the result is the zero vector this is called existence of additive inverse property six if i have two scalar quantities like this c plus d and i'm multiplying this quantity by another vector let's say v and then i can distribute this v to this c and d like this cv plus dv so here we, we also distribute this vector in this case we, we are distributing this vector among the scalars so this is also a distributive property but we are distributing a scalar the next property if i have two scalars multiplied together and then i'm multiplying another vector v with this multiplication property eight if you multiply any vector by one you get the same vector this is very straightforward and 
I have another property. If you multiply any vector by the scalar 0, you get the 0 vector. Note here, this 0 here is the scalar quantity, but the 0 in the right side is the vector, 0 vector, meaning the original position. 10 through, if you multiply any constant, any scalar with the 0 vector, you also get the 0 vector. And let's do a few examples. Uh, I have a vector r equals to in component form 1, negative 4, and I have another vector s, which is given as 2, comma 3 in component form. I have to find number 1, r plus s. How do we do that? We have learned before that if the vectors are given in component form, we just simply add the components with, with, with maintaining the order of the components. So r plus s, this is also a vector and the result will be like this 1 plus 2 comma uh, minus 4 plus 3. So I have to put a vector notation. Remember do not put parentheses because the addition of vectors also a vector. So the resultant vector will be 3 comma negative 1. Second example. Let's say I want to find minus 4s. I'm multiplying the vector s by a constant by a scalar which is negative 4. The scalar multiplication of a vector is also a vector. In this case, we just multiply both of these components by negative 4. So negative 4 times 2, negative 4 times 3. And the answer is negative 8 comma negative 12. So this is negative 4s. Third example, let's say I want to find 3r plus twice s. We're multiplying the vector r by 3 and we're multiplying the vector s by 2 and then we're adding those two vectors. So first of all write 3 and in component form vector r which is 1 comma negative 4 plus 2 times the vector s which is 2 comma 3 and then multiply the components by 3 for the first vector 3 comma negative 12 and then multiply the components here by 2 4 comma 6 and then we just add these two vectors as component wise 3 plus 4 comma negative 12 plus 6 and the final answer is 7 comma negative 6. The next topic, unit vector. Unit vector itself is a vector, but here the magnitude will be just 1. That's why it's called just unit vector. How do we, how do we write the unit vector? Let's say if I have a vector v, which is in component form a comma b, then the magnitude of vector v to Express the magnitude of vector v, we use the double bar, I mean double absolute value sign, which is actually the magnitude notation. So this equals to square root of a squared plus b squared. So the unit vector, unit vector in the direction of the given vector v is defined as uv equals to 1 over the magnitude of vector v times the vector v which is equal to 1 over as we have seen here the magnitude is square root of a square plus b square and the vector v is a comma b and then we just multiply each of the components by this quantity so the unit vector is a square plus b square square root comma b over a square plus b squared square root this is the unit vector in the direction of v where v is a given vector example find a unit vector u in the direction of a given vector w note here we, we we wrote w as a subscript it means that u is an unit vector and it's the it's in the direction of w so where w is 
this first step we need to find the magnitude of w the magnitude of w equals to square root of negative 8 squared plus 15 squared which is equals to 17 so then step 2 step 2 we have to find the unit vector in the direction of w which is the component negative 8 over the magnitude 17 comma the component 15 over the magnitude 17 two important unit vectors i j note here we denoted i and in the top of i we have a special notation it's called hat this is used to denote this special type of unit vectors where i hat equals to it's a unit vector with component one zero and j equals to j hat equals to zero one the unit vectors instead of writing i bar we use i hat instead of writing j bar uh, we use j hat the hat is used to denote the special notation unit vectors in the direction of the x axis and y axis so if this is the x axis and this is the y axis and if i say this is unit 1 this is 2 this is 3 1 2 3 and so on and so forth 1 2 3 so then this will denote i and this vector this unit is just j because it's in the y direction and this is in the x direction so this part actually represents the unit vectors i and j so if i have any vector let's say v equals to a comma b in component form then v can be also written as in component form a i plus b j so in this case the a b all are real number or scalars and i j are the unit vectors so how do you represent a vector in i j notation if i have this vector v here and let's say this is 3 comma 2 the position here is 3 comma 2 so in this case we removed three units in this direction and two units in the upper direction the y direction so the vector v can be written as 3 i that means the vector vector v has moved three units to the x direction and then two units to the y direction that's why it's v equals to 3 i plus 2 j